Okay, last time we were talking about charging, discharging, well, uh, or at least placing a charge on uh, neutral matter, or previously neutral matter. We did some playing around with some sticky tape, and you'll be doing some more playing with sticky tape uh, in the lab this week. And we used, or we uh, discussed, polarization. Okay, so polarization being a separation of charge. And we talked about the mechanism by which, or this is the mechanism by which, a piece of charged matter is attracted to neutral matter. So we saw the tape attracted to my hand, for example. And we talked about induced dipoles. Where if you have... Uh, an atom with a neutral atom with a positively charged nucleus and a negatively charged electron cloud surrounding the nucleus. And if you apply an electric field, so if you bring a positive charged object or a negatively charged object nearby, it's going to apply an electric field. So if we have an electric field applied here, I'll just call it the applied which could be due to, for example, some positive charge over here or some negative charge over here, what have you, then it causes a shift in the electron cloud, right? The electron cloud is lightweight compared to the nucleus. It's negatively charged, and so there's going to be a force on it due to that applied electric field. The force will be that way because of F, F equal to QE. The force is going to be in the opposite direction if we're talking about the electron charge being negative. And um, it shifts a little bit, and it reaches equilibrium when the attraction due to the positively charged proton is balanced by this new force due to the applied electric field. And so what we see is something in the end that looks more like this, although this is, this is a pretty gross exaggeration of what actually happens. But you have a separation of charge, a higher density of negative charge on one end versus on the other end. And so this is called an induced dipole. Okay? A neutral molecule or atom becomes a dipole in the presence of an applied electric field. You had a short homework uh, problem that was due today that just quantified this a little bit more. Uh, we talked last time about the dipole, or when we were dealing with dipoles, we talked about this quantity called dipole moment, electric dipole moment, which is given the symbol P, it's Q times S, where Q is the magnitude of the charge on either end. Okay, so in this case, it's negative E, for, or e, little e, for example. And S is the separation, the amount of distance that the two ends are separated. So that dipole moment here, the, the strength of the dipole uh, in ordinary matter, or usual uh, insulators, can be parameterized with this uh, quantity called alpha. This is the atomic polarizability. It's just telling you the extent to which a neutral atom becomes a dipole when there's an electric field applied to it. So you can think of this as the applied electric field due to some other external charge acting at the presence of some atom and it creates a dipole moment. It causes it to polarize. And it's a property of the material. It's a property of matter. Okay, so for example, carbon atoms, a carbon atom has a particular atomic polarizability of uh, something like 10 to the minus 40 and the units are coulomb meters over Newtons per coulomb. It's just, again, it's just a, a parameter or a, a property of the material. And the larger the atomic polarizability, the, the more it's going to polarize, it's more, the bigger the dipole moment's going to be when you apply the same electric field. This is a pretty tiny number, but when you have lots and lots and lots of atoms in a material, then it adds up. Okay, so you get to see large effects. We can see the, the tape being attracted to my hand, even though the individual molecules may be polarizing only a, a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, so you had a brief question on that. <laughs> 